I remember arriving at the Thunderbirds, right? I'm thinking, yes, only six pilots get to do this. I am, I'm highly skilled as, as a fighter aviator. I'm hometown, Las Vegas, Nevada, hometown girl done good. I'm excited. I get into that first flight and I'm in the back seat of the guy who I'm replacing, right? So you get one orientation flight. Now I'd seen the Thunderbirds fly. I thought it would look doable, right? That's why I applied. I showed up, I'm in the backseat of him flying this whole air show. I'm just observing it as a passenger. I'm thinking 50% of this stuff looks totally doable. I got this. 25% of it, I was like, all right, that's challenging and new, but uh, with enough repetition and practice, I'm gonna get it. And then there was the other 25% where I was like, there is no freaking way that this is possible. I don't know how he just did that with the aircraft and it defies the laws of physics. Right. So now I'm starting to think, what have I gotten myself into? Now we have a four month long training syllabus. OK, on the Thunderbirds. And sometimes you'll fly two, three times a day. If you get behind, you may even fly on Saturdays because we have to graduate at a certain time to go to the air shows at all the different public places you all have been. So there's a strict timeline. Now, this syllabus is crawl to walk to run. As you might expect, it has a building block approach. We have professional standards and certifications. Um, there's no minimum altitudes and airspeeds, all of the things that you might imagine. Now, the formation on the left was the one I was most comfortable in. It was called the diamond formation. Again, I'm flying on the right wing immediately to the right of the lead aircraft. Now, anything in the syllabus that I was learning that was in the diamond formation, right, was coming along. I was feeling pretty strong. And then I met the formation on the right. The formation on the right is called trail. I never got comfortable in the trail position. You could argue it's good I never got comfortable in the trail position. But it was frustrating, right, because here I am at the highlight of my career, supposedly at the height of my expertise, flying on the Thunderbirds. And all of a sudden, right, I had met my match. I had met the Achilles heel. In that picture on the right, I am third down from the top. There's two aircraft above me. The closest one is three feet from the top of the canopy. And then there's one underneath me I can't see who's only three feet below me. One of the reasons I really didn't necessarily like this uh, actual formation itself is as we're stacked on top of each other, sometimes we could pull nose up. And all it took was one pilot, just one, letting off by 0.1 the force of gravity. And that entire thing can start to collapse on itself. It took a high level of trust. And even though I could fly in the, in the formation itself, in that position, I didn't like it. And then I met this, a maneuver called the trail to diamond roll. I'm gonna show you a quick video of me flailing and struggling here in a second so we can all enjoy that together. But if you look at this picture in front of you, I am third down from the top. Again, an aircraft three feet above the canopy, another one underneath me three feet away that I can't see. We're gonna pull up and trail, we're all gonna roll to the left and we're gonna end up in that diamond formation I showed you earlier. All you need to know is that for the number three right wing position, it's one of the hardest, if not the hardest maneuver to get right. Because we're on the outside of this whole thing, we have to power up more, roll more, and pull more on the stick in order to get it done. Now in this video, we're about two weeks away from graduating this four month syllabus. I'm not getting it right. I'm not flying it right. I go from three feet all the way out to 15 to 20 feet away from the other aircraft. I'm supposed to maintain three feet. I'm not meeting the standards. I knew it, my teammates knew it, but nobody was saying anything at all. So here's a video of me struggling, my Achilles heel and my nemesis, the trail to diamond roll. Enjoy. Now, some of you are going to be generous and you're going to say, hey, Nicole, that didn't look so bad. I am here to assure you that I was five times out of position where I should be. That was a D plus C minus effort. I knew it. Everybody knew it. It was the only thing that was holding me back from meeting the standards. I'm two weeks away from supposed graduation. This is stressful. And we went in a debrief that day. We watched it. Everybody cringed in their seats, but nobody said anything. And finally, I did one of the hardest things in my career. Hometown girl done good, Thunderbird pilot, experienced fighter pilot, with some of the best pilots in the Air Force sitting in that room with me. I looked around with a knot in my stomach and put my ego aside, and I said three words, I need help. 
I need help. It was one of the hardest things and hardest moments. And I can still feel sitting at that table and everyone staring back at me. But you know what happened when I finally said that? My team stopped. And for two days, we did that maneuver over and over and over again until I got it right. Because it was the right thing to do by me as a teammate. It was the right thing to do by our mission. And they helped me, not out of a place of judgment or shame, but out of a place of compassion and caring and a shared commitment to our mission. And after two days, I finally figured it out. This is the same maneuver taken within my jet. You can see the reflection of my helmet in the bottom right-hand corner. You see that there's two aircraft above me. The closest is three feet above. The one underneath is three feet below. One of the reasons I really didn't and necessarily like this actual maneuver is as we would roll to the left, the aircraft above is gonna slide down. You'll see this. And at that moment, our wingtips could pass as close as 18 inches to each other. So enjoy this video. And man, it felt good to get that right. And I only got it right because I asked for help and I only got it right because I got the help I needed. There's a lesson here. You are never too good, never too experienced, never too high up in the C-suite to ask for help when you need it. And it's never beneath any of us to offer help without judgment or shame, but out of compassion, caring, and a shared commitment. It's never beneath us to ask for help and it's never beneath us to offer help.